there, I'm Frank Crenshaw. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was scrolling through Facebook and I noticed people were posting the models in something called uh, Tomeo Week over in Aircraft Models with Detail and Scale. So I decided to join in on the fun and I made a collage of my Tomeo builds and I entered, entered them by posting and tagging them Tomeo Week. And I started looking at the other models that were also posted, and there's a lot of really nice entries. I didn't realize it was a contest that had a prize. I, I thought it was a contest where maybe your model would be like the backdrop of the group or something. I, you know, I, I really wasn't thinking it was for a, a prize. So I was really surprised that a couple days later, Bert Kinsey sent me a uh, private message and told me I had actually won the contest, and my prize was a 132nd scale to me, a P51D. Where did I want it sent? Um, I was shocked. I was not expecting this. Um, I know the Tamiya kit very well. Um, I know uh, the P51 pretty well. But I'm not really in a P51 groove right now. Um, it's, it's not high on my list. But this kind of changes things. Because it, it brings back a memory that I want to talk to you a little bit about. Now back in 2009, I went to the IPMS Nats in uh, Kansas City, Missouri. And it was a great Nats. It was a really good one. Um, a lot of vendors. In fact, there were so many vendors that they had to move some of them out of the main vendor room into a conference room in the basement of the uh, of the venue. Um, it was a great it was a great match for me. I entered a 132nd scale 109E and I actually won an award. And uh, you know, just the so many vendors. That's really why we go to Nats, right? <laughs> you know, it's the it's the best hobby shop you'll ever go to. And uh, so. Uh, I walked around, I looked at everything in the vendor room, and, and then I realized there was more that had been moved into this overflow area. So I went down to go check it out. A buddy of me, a buddy of mine, who actually is a pilot, we both went down. And uh, we get down there, and there's some stuff, and I don't even really remember what it was, but there wasn't a lot, and it wasn't impressive. It wasn't really like, oh, man. And one of the things that was interesting is there was this little old guy down there, and he was sitting in a chair, you know, his glasses on, reading something, and he had all these pamphlets. He didn't have any kits, he didn't have any resin, he didn't have any, you know, he didn't have a big sign. He's just this little old guy sitting there. And so, uh, for some reason, I went up and talked to him. And I introduced myself, and he told me his name was Richard Hewitt. Oh, well, pleased to meet you, Mr. Hewitt. And Richard Hewitt was a fighter pilot in the Second World War. <clears throat> well, now I'm interested. Um... Mr. Hewitt flew P-51 Mustangs with the 78th Fighter Group, the Chekhotev clan. Wow, I'm all in now. Mr. Hewitt was a 10-kill ace. Oh, boy. I, I might want him to sign my hat or something. Um, so I, I spent a good amount of time talking to Dick Hewitt. Um, he was selling a book, but it wasn't a book book. It was a book he'd written his memoirs, but it wasn't published. It wasn't bound. It was like somebody printed it off on a laser printer. It was like clamped together with paper clips and uh, stuffed in a manila envelope. And it, part of that book, he gave you a picture of him flying in his airplane. Big dick. Well, I bought it. I think I paid 20-some bucks for it. I actually wound up reading the book, but it wasn't a very good book. Richard, he was a great pilot, but he wasn't a good author. Um, that, that's, I won't hold that against him because he's a great man. Um, but, uh, he was fun to talk to and, and that's why I spent four hours talking to him. Now he was a 10 ace kill. Okay. Most guys went through the war and never shot anything down. I mean, this guy shot down 10 Germans. How'd he do that? Well, he was there early too. Okay. He was flying P-47s, D models. He got most of his kills in the P-47s actually. Now, that really interested me because at the time, I was playing a game called IL-2 Sturmovik, and I found the P-47 to be one of the most difficult planes to do dogfighting in. And so I was really curious how, how he did it, and I was just really interested to hear how, how did you really take this P-47 and go shoot down Fock Wolves? I mean, and I'm having visions of, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm just like, how'd you do it? And he looked at me and said, well, I flew up behind him and I opened fire. And I was like, 
no, really? And he said, no, yeah, really. He said, we positioned ourselves in such a way that we just would follow them and they had no idea we were there. And all I had to do was press the button. I was, he said he was never in a maneuvering fight, ever, in the war. And he got 10 kills. The thing that was really funny about Dick in talking to him, he was so uh, matter of fact and so self, so unassuming, so uh, selfless, not not this uh, preaching this bravado like, oh, yeah, I'm this big fighter pilot. And, oh, yeah, we, you know, there I was, 30,000 feet. No, he was like, yeah, I just blew up behind him and pulled the trigger and that was it. They're done. Okay. <laughs> kind of anticlimactic, but that, that's, that was what it was. And it turned out that was actually more interesting than maybe, you know, stories of high G turns and stuff. I, you know, it, it was pretty cool. Um, so, but what the more interesting thing was, we didn't talk about the details of the airplanes. We talk, he talked to us about life in the, in the military at the time. <clears throat> now he had, a. Uh, He'd done something he wasn't supposed to. He became friends with his crew. Um, you're supposed to. You were supposed to keep a very professional, military professional relationship with your crew. The officers were not allowed to fraternize with the uh, enlisted back then. Well, he fraternized with the enlisted. He said they were his best friends, and they all did stuff together, and they were all inseparable. And uh, that paid off later. Um, I don't know if you know this or not. But in the 78th fighter group, anyway, according to Dick Hewitt, the airplanes were not named by the pilot. They were named by the crew chief. And Dick said that turned out good for him. Now, Dick was a little guy. He was like five foot six, five foot seven. He was not a giant. He was, he was, he, he was really small. And, uh, you know, just think about that for a minute. Little guy named Dick. Hmm. Okay, so his crew chief, now they, they hung out and they did things together. And one of the things they did is they gambled. A lot of dice, craps. Well, his crew chief named the plane Big Dick and painted a couple dice on there. And and the uh, Big Dick is a dice hand. And if that's what it is, I believe it's a five and a six. Anyway, it's called the Big Dick. So so that's what they named his plane. And, his, and he was so grateful because... He said, if his crew chief wouldn't have liked him, he might have called him. His crew chief said, if I didn't like you, I was going to name it Little Dick. <laughs> anyway, that's the kind of story he would, he would tell. He was just this really unassuming, just, and he was smart as a whip. Oh, he was really intelligent. You could tell there was a lot going on in his head, you know, and he was well, well aware of, you know, his surroundings. And, you know, he, he was not a showman. For him to get 10 kills without Getting into a maneuver fight, this guy had to be pretty smart. And uh, that's that's what he didn't say. You know, he didn't say, I outflew the guy with my reflexes. He outflew them with his brains. He put himself in positions where they had no idea he was there. He knew they were there, and they flew right in front of him, and he shot them down. He did say some of his kills were strafing. That's another story he had. Um, he lost a good friend, actually. And he, uh, he had a bit of a beef with the commander of the squadron, uh, you know, big beautiful doll. I can't remember his name, but um, apparently the guy ordered a uh, a mission to a strafe uh, something, and it was completely unnecessary. Very near the end of the war, and it wound up costing Dick a, a good buddy, and he 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 always resented that and felt uh, that was a terrible command because you couldn't you couldn't say no, you couldn't say no. I'm not going to do that. So these people had to fly down into this. Um, you know, into this nightmare of anti-aircraft near the end of the war and get killed. So uh, he did talk about that, but it was just fascinating talking to this guy. And he uh, retired. Well, he didn't retire. He got out of the military and he, he got a job at IBM and he actually worked his way up and became a corporate executive. And uh, so he was he was in charge of uh, some major projects for IBM, made a you know, some that's that's what his book was about is some of the stuff he did post war and he he did a lot of stuff. I mean he he was a pretty amazing guy and that, and you never would have known it. This little guy sitting at this table. <laughs> Turns out he was a giant. You know, but you had to go talk to him to figure it out. Anyway, that's why it was such a great time. Well, I fell in love with Dick Hewitt and I want to build his plane. 
Um, now, at that very Nats, because of that, I, I actually found this. This is the old Aeromaster decal sheet for the 78 uh, checkers, anyone, checkers, anyone. It actually has markings for his aircraft. So that's enough for me to make masks and paint paint this as Big Dick. The thing is, it's missing the crew chief names, which are stenciled on a white a white block on the cowling. I don't know how I'm going to do that. I'm struggling with that. So if any of you guys know how to make decals that like that, those stencils, um, do let me know because I really, really, really want to do this airplane, and that is a big holdup. Um, well, that's about it, and that's that's why I'm building a plane called Big Dick. Um, it it's a it's a neat story about a really great man from the greatest generation, and uh, he's not alive now. I'm I'm certain he's not no longer alive, but I sure appreciated my four hours talking to Dick Hewitt, who truly was one of the shining stars of the greatest generation, and. Uh, this model will uh, will be dedicated to Little Dick. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll be posting updates on this build soon. Now, I won't be doing a review. I'm just going to build this model. I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of work like I am on the P-40B. I'm probably going to build this one pretty vanilla. I mean, I'll, I'll paint it nice, but it, it's, it doesn't require the work that some of the other models I build do. So it should be fairly straightforward. It's a nice, easy model. And I'm hoping to have it ready by Nats. Okay, well, thanks for uh, watching. And that's, uh, that's my first video on this particular airplane.